the Mediterranean theater of World War II included campaigns and engagements across North Africa, Southern Europe, and the Middle East. While British and American forces made up the bulk of the Allied power in the region throughout the war, Australian forces also played a key supporting role from 1940 through 1942. Two cruisers and several destroyers from the Australian Navy were generally on station in the Mediterranean Sea during those three years, with the most accomplished of these being the cruiser HMAS Sydney. These vessels were the most active from 1940 through early 1941. They performed essential tasks like mine sweeping, patrolling, and submarine defense. They also engaged in several small battles. The most significant of these was the Battle of Cape Spada in July 1940. The Italian Navy engaged an Allied force led by HMAS Sydney with several destroyers in support. The result was a resounding victory for the Allies, with one Italian cruiser sunk, another forced to retreat, and no losses of their own. It was also a major strategic victory. Despite its numerical advantage over its Allied counterparts on paper, Italian naval leadership was hesitant to undertake offensive naval movements. This unwillingness to act only increased after the Battle of Cape Spada, so despite its strength, the Italian Navy played a relatively small role in the Mediterranean for the remainder of the war. Australian ships often made up the backbone of small, far-flung actions like operations in the Red Sea and Persian Gulf. While these were not major missions for the Allies, they still held significant strategic importance. For example, the attack in the Persian Gulf helped to overthrow an Axis-leaning dictator. It also secured the area and access to valuable oil for the Allies. In addition, the Australian Navy provided significant assistance during the evacuations from Greece and Crete. These were timely and crucial to the Allied war effort, as they helped save troops and resources that otherwise would have been lost, thus enabling the Allies to continue the campaign in North Africa. Although the contingent of the Australian Navy in the Mediterranean was composed of smaller ships and did not contain the powerful battleships of the British fleet, their destroyers proved to be quite valuable. Their speed and range made them into a useful weapon for the Allies, as they could follow their forces along the coast, providing bombardment as well as communication support. This was crucial in North Africa as well as in Syria, where a battle fought close to the ocean allowed for substantial support from destroyers, turning the tables decisively in the Allies' favor. Finally, and perhaps most significantly, Australian destroyers were the primary resuppliers of Tobruk during its long siege. They undertook a speedy, dangerous journey, often at night, to bring the defenders necessary food and supplies. Several Australian ships were sunk as a result. These midnight supply runs were crucial to the Allied war effort in North Africa, as Tobruk was a key fort and harbor, and whoever held it gained a massive foothold in the region. Australian army forces also played an important part in Allied actions in the Mediterranean theater from 1940 to 1942. The first major campaign there came in North Africa in late 1940 with Operation Compass, an Allied attempt to push the Italian forces back and seize decisive control in North Africa. The British Army took the lead in this action, facing the brunt of enemy forces, while the Australian Army knocked out enemy forts along the coast that the Allies had bypassed during their quick advance. They succeeded in hard-fought battles at Bardia and Benghazi, securing the Allied forces' rear and capturing many prisoners, such as the 40,000 they took at Bardia, which decimated the strength of the Italian Army. One of the enemy bases the Australians took was Tobruk, a major port located directly on the coast. At the time, the only two major cities in the North African theater were Tripoli, controlled by the Axis, about 800 miles to the far west, and Alexandria, the gateway to the Middle East and the Suez Canal. In between lay nothing but empty desert. There were a few small cities, but none of them had the facilities, and especially the harbor, that Tobruk did. Whichever side held it would have a useful launching point from which to attack the other's territory. Hitler decided to send German troops to North Africa to support his Italian allies because of their recent losses. Given this, in early 1941, the Allied advance was suddenly stopped and forced back toward Alexandria. Tobruk became cut off and was soon encircled by Axis forces, with the Australian 9th Division, which had successfully captured it weeks earlier, now being forced to defend it. The Australian troops performed gallantly, standing firm under enemy advances and even launching small raids and counterattacks in an attempt to break out from the siege. They were able to hold out for over 250 days until Allied forces mounted a counterattack that gained enough territory to relieve the pressure. Besides the siege of Tobruk, the fighting in North Africa quieted during the middle of 1941 as attention shifted to other areas. Greece was the first, as in April 1941, the Allies sent troops to help repel a German invasion of that country. 
the Australians made up the majority of this expeditionary force. The operation in Greece was short-lived and unsuccessful. Allied forces fought well, but in the end it was simply a campaign that they could not win, as they had a numerical disadvantage, especially in tanks. Furthermore, they were plagued by poor communication and an often confused defensive strategy. By early May 1941, Allied forces were driven back towards the Mediterranean Sea and were evacuated by boat to Crete. The defense of Crete was much like the campaign in Greece, as the Allied strategy was hampered by poor logistics and ill-timed mistakes. Much of the force in the island was evacuated before the Germans seized full control. Soon after Greece and Crete fell, Allied forces became engaged in Syria, which was controlled by Vichy France at the time. Although remote, it was strategically valuable because of its access to oil and the Trans-Jordan pipeline. Additionally, the Germans and British had long viewed the Middle East as the crossroads of the Old World, as it sits at a critical junction of South Asia, Russia, and Africa. Hitler had a grandiose vision of sweeping through the Middle East to attack British India and potentially even link up with Japanese forces in Southeast Asia. German leadership also thought that they could use Syria as a base for an attack on British Egypt, leaving the Allies to fight a two-front war in North Africa. The Allies attacked Syria in early June, with Australian forces playing a central role as the campaign was built around the two infantry divisions they sent. The Allied strategy for Syria split their forces up into three task groups divided by mountain ranges. The Australians formed the main center thrust of the attack. The campaign lasted three weeks and was successful. Though the price was high, it helped to secure a critical geopolitical area for the Allies and also gave them a major victory, which they had not experienced in months. The main focus of the fighting in the Mediterranean now shifted back to North Africa. The British launched several small-scale operations during the summer and early fall, but none succeeded. Major actions in North Africa began again in October 1941, when the Allies launched Operation Crusader, an attempt to deal a major blow to the Germans and relieve Tobruk. This operation succeeded, driving the Germans back, breaking the siege of Tobruk, and establishing new battle lines west of it. However, almost immediately after the year turned, the Allies experienced as major a collection of defeats as the set of victories they'd achieved a few months earlier. The Axis forces recaptured Tobruk and sent the Allies reeling backward toward Alexandria through the precise application of Blitzkrieg-style mobile warfare. Throughout the first six months of 1942, the Allies essentially engaged in a fighting withdrawal back towards Egypt. This sudden, sweeping success by the Germans was the first real victory the Axis had in North Africa. The possibility that the Germans might be able to take the major Allied base at Alexandria, as well as Egypt and access to the Suez Canal, was very real. All of a sudden, the Germans seemed to be in position to seize control of North Africa once and for all. A massive reason why the Axis had such sweeping success during this time was because of Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, a cunning strategist who, despite inferior forces, used the speed and power of mobile warfare greatly to his advantage. For his skill in battle, here in the moniker The Desert Fox and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill even recognized him as one of the most potent adversaries the Allies had to face. The Germans were pushing to capture Alexandria, but the British had established a defensive line at Al Alamein, about 70 miles west of the city. The Germans had to stop advancing there, partially because of the defensive line, but also since they had overextended themselves and run short on supplies. El Alamein is an area well suited to defensive engagements. To the direct north of it is the sea, and about 30 miles south of it is the impassable Qatar Depression, so the attackers are naturally funneled into a corridor. The first battle of El Alamein was fought in late June of 1942. The Australian sector experienced heavy fighting, and they helped to break down a German attempt to punch through the defensive lines and push to Alexandria. The battle ended in a standstill, but it was a strategic victory for the Allies, as it gave them time to regroup and reorganize. The only major fighting that took place in North Africa between July and October 1942 was the Battle of Al Haifa in late July, an attempt by the Axis to sweep around the British defensive lines and push on to Alexandria. It failed, and with the loss, so did any remaining hope of success in North Africa for the Axis powers. They were simply undermanned and undersupplied, while the Allies grew stronger every day. If the Axis forces had been able to reach Alexandria before the British grew too strong, they stood a reasonable chance of winning the campaign. They were not able to do so, and the Allies soon had a massive advantage in men and resources. The Second Battle of Al Alamein 
and late October 1942 was an Allied attempt to break out of the standstill in North Africa and place the Axis forces on their heels once and for all. The original Allied plan broke down under heavy fighting. Their leadership soon switched to a new one in which the Australian sector was critical. This sector contained important terrain features, a road, and railroad lines. The Allies devised a crumbling strategy in which they essentially threw the Australian 9th Division against the German forces and waited for either the Germans to simply be worn down or for gaps to be opened for swift armor penetration. For several days, the main effort of both armies was concentrated in the Australian sector. Fighting was extremely heavy, especially over a hill between the two opposing lines named Trig 29. This was a critical terrain feature given that it allowed command of the surrounding area. Eventually, despite many losses, the Australians accomplished their mission, capturing Trig 29 and damaging the German forces enough to cause them to retreat. After this battle, the Germans lost all chance of winning control of North Africa. They simply had lost too many men and tanks, and Hitler was unwilling to send any more. Due to the American and British landings in November 1942, the Axis were forced to fight a two-front war, and their forces in North Africa eventually surrendered in July of 1943. Most Australian forces were pulled out of the Mediterranean theater shortly after the Second Battle of El Alamein due to needs in the Pacific theater of the war. Through the manpower and resources they provided, as well as the courageous fighting and success they produced in key battles, like Tobruk and the Second Battle of El Alamein, they were able to help secure an Allied victory in the Mediterranean and tighten the stranglehold on Germany.